guess what? All right, guess what? So, what we're going to do, now you're gonna win a prize. Now, I also own a jam and jelly company, so we have some jams up here um, and some fish and stuff. So after you're done, just come to me. Everyone's gonna win something. I was going to do a prize that everyone wanted and a prize you didn't want, like toilet paper, soap, toothpaste, but I changed my mind. So everybody's gonna get something that they probably like. So, um, but yes, this is about live bait. Oh my God, did I say that? Let me say it one time. Live bait. Come on, somebody. I love minnows, I love live bait. All you anti-live bait fishermen out there, oh well. So listen, um, you know, live bait is something that really never gets covered a lot. You hear a lot about jigs, you hear a lot about live scope, all that type of stuff. Listen, not everyone has the money to go and purchase a live scope. Um, everyone doesn't like it. Some people like it. But um, live bait has its place, especially during certain seasons. So every single thing that's in these jars is something that a crappie eats. Now I want to give a shout out right now to DMF Bait Company. How many have went to Walmart and picked up some night crawlers or something before? Okay, DMF, um, we have done a couple things. I had a kids fishing rodeo last year. They sponsored that and gave the bait for that. And also, um, majority of everything that you're seeing here, uh, they also um, provided. So shout out to DMF, always look them up. Um, X and X is coming. All right, so with that being said, who wants to go first? <laughs> You'll go first? Okay. I want you to draw a number out. Go ahead, draw one number out. I'm going to give it to you. Open it up, tell me what it is. Tell us what it is. Four. Number four. So I don't know what number four is. We're going to fly up. Now, can you still see without them? All right. Hey, just put that over your eyes so you don't want to hurt you. All right, so here is number four. So now what you're going to do, sir, you're going to reach in here and you're going to try to tell me what bait you are feeling. Okay, so come over here. You see that $10 right there? I don't see nothing. Okay, that's good. All right, so what, I'm going to give him only 10 seconds, so we're going to count down together. All right, 10 seconds to fit. I don't know why bacteria is. So you're going to try to guess what this is. All right, here we go. Go ahead, stick your hand in there. All right, let's count down starting in. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, let's see what you say. It feels like dirt. Feel like dirt? Okay. I'm going to move this off. You can take your blindfolds off. Take that off. What do, you, do you know what this is? Is that mealworms? Like this is all wax worms. How many have ever fished with wax worms before? Oh, it's 50 right. Right? 50. <laughs> Give our, our, what's your name? Jeremy. Jeremy, give Jeremy a, a round of applause. Make sure you see that one. Let's get All right. All right, so wax worms. Has anyone ever used wax worms before? Yeah. Okay. It is something that really a lot of people got away from, but wax worms, um, they work well when the water is over 70 degrees. So there's a well-known team out there named Ronnie Capps, Steve Coleman, won all these tournaments. Um, but one tournament, they just kicked everyone's teeth in. It was on Ross Barnett. And what came out, they were using jigs, right? But on the jig, they stuck, I mean, I don't know, probably like 15 wax worms per jig. In the springtime, wax worms and male crappie, I guess, don't mix. And they will defend that nest with fury if that jig comes up there with these wax worms. So kind of keep that in mind when you're in the, in the springtime and those females are on the bed and those males are guarding and all that type of stuff. If they're not really reacting or committing to a jig, you can go ahead and use wax worms for um, tipping your bait. Also, um, how many have ever used power bait? Crappie nibbles, right? Um, instead of using crappie nibbles, if you have wax worms, it's another, all uh, power bait is doing is creating a scent trail, or it releases some kind of scent, right? 
This is a natural scent. So natural is always better. So wax worms, give them a shot if you've never tried it before. All right, who else is going up? You, come on up, buddy, come on up. Draw me a number. You got a number? Let's see. <laughs> Number two. All right, here, put the blindfold on. Number two, number two. You see that hundred dollar bill? Okay, you missed it. All right, here we go. I want you to go ahead and stick. <laughs> I love this one. I want you to stick your hand in there. We're gonna give you 10 seconds to figure out what you are feeling. Here we go, start counting down. Let's count together. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. All right, tell me what you were feeling, sir. What? Take those blindfolds off. That man said he was feeling a leech. And you were absolutely right. Leeches, ladies and gentlemen, a parasite. Thank you for participating. Leeches. Has anyone ever seen a leech? So, there are two types of leeches, ladies and gentlemen. There are human leeches. No, no, okay, we're not going to talk about those human leeches. You knew that was good. We got some of my be friends, family, you know. But all right, so there are a couple types of leeches. But two that I'm going to talk about right now, uh, one is called the ribbon leech. It is only black or brown. When you find leeches, leeches are really not common as a bait to use for probably down south, the central and southern states. But up north, they use leeches a lot. Now, normally when you hear about leeches, you hear about smallmouth fish and all that, but probably will also tear up a leech, especially black crappie. Now black crappie has a diet consistent of a bluegill. They're really, really closely related to the sunfish. So, I try to find the leeches that you normally use, which is the ribbon leech for bait, and they are hard to find. They really come out in the spring, the summertime. But there are another type of leech called the horse leech, also known as the medical leech. Now the ribbon leech does not suck your blood. But the leech that I have right now in my hand in this jar, and that he was feeling, but these are dead, but this is alive. This leech actually thrives off of blood. It's called a horse leech or a medical leech. Still to this day, people use leeches, the horse leech or the medical leech, uh, as a form of healing. They believe that it'll help with people with arthritis and all that type of stuff. Guess what I'm not going to try and find out. So I will never try to use these leeches, but a leech in here right now, as you can see, Anyone want to touch it? No, we're not going to. <laughs> He's like, no. So you can see it. You can just pass it around. That is a medical leech. It is brown. It, it has a streak of yellow and green. Really funky looking. It has a suction cup on one end, and the other part is the one they use to attach and kind of, it feels like soft sandpaper, and then also they'll crack your skin and actually start to feed off your blood. Anyone want to use leeches? Now, I don't have, these actually died on me. I, they came from New York. Um, but if they were in water, to see the movement of leeches is amazing. They swim just like this, and they're really fast. So how people use it, they'll take, let's say that you're using like a, a minnow hook, you go right behind the head, and you just hook it in. You don't thread it on, you can, but you want as much movement to that bait as possible. When fishing is tough, a jig is not working, and a small jig is not working, live bait is hard to beat, okay? So if you're out there and you're taking the kids fishing, you want to make sure that they're using some type of live bait, because you want them to have some fun. So, leeches, we got wax worms. What else do we have on this table? Let's see, let's see. Who's gonna be next? Come on, come on, come on. You're gonna have to see what I got to put on I want you to draw a number out for me. Let me see what we have here. Number one. Number one, let's see. 
number one. You see that rattlesnake down there? Okay, it's done. All right, so listen. Let's go ahead and stick your hand. Now, wait a minute. Be careful. All right, so go ahead and stick your hand. Now, we're going to count them. <laughs> now, listen. Hold on, wait a minute. Let's do this agreement. If something bites you or sticks you, are, are, are you going to sue us? Okay, good. Here we go. All right, go ahead and stick your hand in there. And let's count down. Sorry, Ned. So we go ahead and stick your hand in there. It's water in there, so you can. There we go. All right, you feel it around? All right, start counting down. Sorry, Ned. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, what do you think that is? Crawdad, that is correct. Crawfish, and ladies and gentlemen, these are raw. Thank you so much. <laughs> that water was pretty cold, wasn't it? Now, crawfish. The water is cold, they will be more active. It's been outside in the truck. Shout out to Harry Saw Mental Farm in Arkansas that I'm connected with also. That's where these crawfish came from. Now, how many have ever cleaned crappie and saw crawdads in their stomach? Anyway. What month was it? June. June? So how big were those? We're, they're, yeah, they're, they were pretty big. Anyone else? Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. All right, so it takes, let me give you a little background on crawfish here. Let me pull up my notes real quick. All right, so crawfish really started to get active in February through May. And they really, really start getting active. They start hatching. It takes three to four months in order for them to get to a big size crawfish. Like that. Three to four months before they get to this size. <laughs> All right, y'all see it's kicking. It's a lot. This definitely is a lot. Definitely a lot. All right, so that's why a lot of companies out there, if you go to, I'm not affiliated with this company, but uh, GoDaddy Bates, GoDaddy Bates actually has this picture on their Facebook page. See those crappie? Can you see that crappie? Now that crappie still has eggs in her, so you can tell that is, and it doesn't look like she's about to lay them, so pretty spawn which is probably going to be that February, early March. Um, did y'all see that? So you see what size those crawfish are, right? They're very small. So sometimes that's why different companies that maybe someone here has crawfish, plastic crawfish to use as bait. A lot of crappie fishermen don't use them. But white crappie, okay, so listen to this, white crappie definitely will eat crawfish. Over there in Mississippi near me, um, there's a lake out there. Matter of fact, at Grenada, they can tell you, we went to um, the store and bought a crawdad thing for bass that had different sizes. And I used some of those to entice some of those big three pound crawfish. So crawfish, always kind of remember that either you can use the imitation crawfish in early um, pre-spawn, during the spawn, or use a bait that symbolizes those colors your browns, your chartreuses, your oranges, especially in muddy water, okay? Man, we only got one left. One left. So that's it. Hopefully it's three. It's three. <laughs> All right, go on, put that on. Has anyone ever fished with crawfish, live crawfish? Yeah? Were you fast fishing? Or just, just fishing? Creek fishing? Awesome. Okay. You see the iPhone on the table right there? You don't want it? Okay, good. That was fine. All right, here you go. Stick your hand right in there. Start going around. Let's count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so what are you feeling? Okay, give me a guess of what type of worm you're feeling. Good. Good 
too. You a lot of their fish, no. You're correct, here you go. I'll give you that. Ladies and gentlemen, he said red wigglers or red worms, and he is actually correct. Has anyone ever used worms for crappie fishing? Now this is amazing. Now I'm gonna give you some history. Thank you so much. Hey, Kip, what's your name? Finley. Finley, give Finley a round of applause. Thank you so much. You can have a seat. I got a prize for you too. Okay, so there's a man in the crowd that looks has a uniform just like me, which is my father. That's what he told me since all my life. So I believe it. So um, you know, it's interesting. It's Black History Month. I never shy away from our history. When Dad was growing up, there was something called segregation. And some of those out here, you probably know, dark history, but oh well. Um, but they had something about Jim Crow. Well, African Americans could not use minnows. Or, now, those rules were different in different counties and different states. But they couldn't use minnows or any reels. They had to use cane poles. So my dad would tell you, the game wardens are here, but so they would go out and someone would sneak, I don't know how to get a reel. But they would have one and they were like, oh, no, a game warden coming. So they would toss that reel in the bushes and go out there and use it. <laughs> Y'all catch anything? Oh, yeah, I'm not just using these game poles. But because they were not allowed to use minnows, they always used worms. And I've seen pictures back in that day of monster crappie. So I was like, wait a minute. One day I'm thinking, y'all were only using night crawlers or worms that y'all could dig up and were catching crappie. So it's amazing to me how you guys lifted your hands up for those that actually use worms. Now, how did you know we hooked them? And they'll bite. Anyone else? How do you know if you fish for worms? Who else raised their hand? How do you know when you look your worms when you catch crappie? <laughs> and you dig it. So you leave a lot, a lot left out, right? Perfect. So I was long lining. There's a technique. I was in Indiana, Potoka, Indiana, fishing a tournament. We were coming in. I cast out a 30 second ounce jig. I had some worms on hand. I just went on and threaded it through and then left like that much out. And just was pulling it. Right? And we're just pulling going like one mile per hour and all of a sudden that pole bends back. Big old black crappie. I was like, oh wow, look at that. Let's just try it again. Boom, does the same thing. I'm like, what in the world is going on? What does that look like? Well, if you can see the action, it's moving like this. Almost like, what type of bait, artificial bait, does that movement or anything that has that action, what does that mimic? Well, artificial bait, what, like artificial has a lot of movement when you pull it through the water. Okay, <laughs> he's getting middle. No, curly tail. A curly tail does the same type of movement, has that erratic movement that you're pulling them in. That is why live bait, or those minnows, or those worms, I mean, will work. You wanna always leave a little off. Never just thread it all the way on. But leave a little bit off. When those fish don't wanna to respond to anything else, especially if you're using a live scope, you can drop that live bait right there in front of them. And let that worm move, or that leech move, and they'll go ahead and commit. Any questions? No, no, it, yeah, like, like I said, leeches are hard to come by central, southern states, but you can't order them, but it has to be in the spring. Now, I'm also supposed to have one more thing, but I don't have it. They didn't, they didn't send it to me. Um, there's one other thing. From this point on, how many so know what a spike They're giving is. away fishing poles to the kids. What's a spike? So you get free fishing rods. Nope. Y'all want free fishing rods? They're called it. Spell S-P-I-K-E. All the kids spike. are getting free fishing rods with those okay outfitters. Okay, a spike is very yeah. similar to this. for mom and dad by over there, they got a Smith and Wesson tour in A spike in is very similar to a wax worm. Okay. But a spike is just a nice professional name for a magnet. And they got a tactical shotgun for three minutes. Magnets is an awesome bait so to use right here in the door because room. it is actually more durable than a wax worm. Their boot is right, right across the So I haven't tried it yet, but. All the <laughs>
I will be trying it, trust me, this year. So next year, ask me how did the spikes work, I'll let you know. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Hopefully you learned a little bit or something. Take your kids fishing, come by our booth, go and they participate and pick up your prizes. Thank you so much.